Um, so how easy is it to get ex-rugby players to turn out for a football tournament? Um, it's definitely easier than getting them to turn out to a, to a veterans rugby tournament, I'll tell you that. Um, they know that there's not going to be contact involved, so it's a, it's a joyous day out for them. And I think every rugby player thinks they have footballing ability somewhere within, within them. Um, so yeah, what we try and do is stick mainly to backs. We'll throw a few f forwards in there for, for just for comedy value and laugh at, you know, James Forrester or someone like that. He's, uh, he used to be called the Birdman because he's got the skinniest legs that's ever been made so he'll probably fall over those a bit of time but hopefully his knee will stand up <laughs> he struggled when he was playing rugby so um, yeah it, it's actually um, it's actually been it's been quite easy obviously having played for Bath and Gloucester as well that makes it uh, a little bit easier for to get boys from those two clubs and then obviously with Naz uh, like Luke Narraway being a Worcester Nick Baxter being at Worcester we can we can pull those up we just need to, we get, we're working on the Bristol the Bristol aspect at the moment that's the one we've got to try and pull pull people from somewhere. How surprised do you think the fans will be when they watch these guys playing a competitive five-a-side football match? Uh, uh, no, I, th I think it'll still be competitive. Um, obviously, I'm not entirely sure what the standard of skill level will be, but uh, um, I think it'll be entertaining anyway. There'll be a lot of banter there. Can you imagine there'll be a lot of slide tackling and, and hacking and hooking and probably a lot of illegal play? Uh, the referee will probably have to be quite loose with his... Uh, with his, it, it's, a, it's going to be like an 80s football game. There'll be studs down the shins, calves, you know, you know two foot tackles into the ankles, you know, the usual. You've got to get a little bit out of it. <laughs> Any of the guys you've got coming you would think might be a bit of a dark horse, actually? Well, again, like if Nicky Robinson comes, fly halves are always, they're always quite, quite handy with their, their kicking. They're always either failed footballers or wannabe footballers aren't they you know you look at sips and then even if you know someone like Danny Kerr always thought he could be a footballer but then decided he actually was and he was a rugby player so I think you know anyone in the backs um, backs normally we we used to always play f like footy as a warm-up uh, before team were on a Friday so they're all, there's always people in there who fancy themselves but we'll, we'll see <laughs> once we get I'm definitely out of the uh, sort of John Smith's Abbott sort of advert just good. stick your foot through it good. solid solid 1980s centre back <laughs> no messing around with it at the back just send it forward and, and out of the people you've got coming who, who do you think is going to be great to have on the dressing room but maybe a bit more useless on the pitch uh, well, we'll try and drag Bolsh along uh, Bolsh is always quite good in the changing rooms um, actually he, he could be handy but um, since retiring he's, he's no longer the slim slender man that he once was okay. so uh, <laughs> I don't think exercise is high on his key, even though he is cycling across the Alps this year, so he needs to get a little bit in shape. So oh, it uh, could, could start him off. This is this oh, could okay. be his, this could be his kickstart. So uh, um, yeah, but he's always good value in the in the change rooms. Luke Narraway is always good value uh, in the change rooms, uh, but Naz definitely will fancy himself as a footballer. All right. Definitely. Um, anyone that you got lined up that you think may forget it's actually on? Uh, yeah, well, Nicky Robinson, yeah, that, that could fall into that category for sure. Uh, as a Welshie, he, yeah, I did a lunch with him yesterday, and he was late, and he told me not to be late, and he was like 15, 20 minutes late. So, right. um, yeah, he could definitely forget about it. Um, and who'll be the first in the bar afterwards? First in the bar, I think he's, that's just a genuine race. <laughs> that'll think, be the fastest yeah, yeah, that, that, that'll, that'll be the fastest you see the boys move. I think. I think, I think everyone who's, who's coming is is good fun and enjoys that that aspect of uh, of catching up with people afterwards and having a beer. So, um, but that's what that's the type of people you want at an event like this. It's uh, you know it's you got you want people to mingle and um, you know as well as all the awareness we're raising around sport and Parkinson's. It's it's also you know for people to get to meet us and, and have a chit chat and, and just share some uh, I don't know, old stories, war stories, whatever stories.